Hello everybody and welcome back to the Chariot series with myself, Critical Rocket, and we're up to the first of the Innisfear 80 tonners. And I've decided to go with the Victor for this. Um I know a lot of people I swerved, I think, and they might have thought I'd gone with the also, but I felt, I felt the Victor was a mech I hadn't played for a while and was one that I, I really wanted to uh, have a go of the old goldfish bowl face, which for anyone who knows the original will understand what I'm talking about. So, uh, the Victor 9D is what we're kicking off with, although I'm recording these chronologically, as in what variant came when. Uh, it, you might be watching random order, but it doesn't matter. The 9D is the first of the Victors to be developed uh, using some of the lost tech uh, after the Hell Memory Core being recovered. And as such, the AC-20, that was the focal point of the Victor, is replaced with a Gauss Rifle instead, giving the mech a much-needed ranged combat uh, capability, something that the Victor had always really suffered from. It's uh, actually an assault mech that uh, sacrifices a lot of armour for its manoeuvrability. It's an 80 tonner equipped with jump jets, after all, and a lot of its weaponry relies heavily on its ability to jump into optimal range to utilise its AC-20, its medium lasers and its SRM. Now, uh, the SRM is retained here, but the medium, uh, medium lasers become pulse versions. So, its damage output is relatively similar uh, to the standard build, it's just that the way it plays is a bit different. Uh, the 9D is not my favourite of the three though, I have to admit. It's the one I had the most trouble with getting a, a good recording, because in MechWare Online, the problem is a single Gauss rifle isn't enough. A single weapon really isn't enough in, in any case in Mech Online. Line. If, you, if you're going to have a weapon with a big punch, generally bring two. The only weapon I, I seem to feel that a single uh, example of that works well is probably an AC-20, an Ultra model or an LB. One of the 20 types of weapons tend to work best. But a single Gauss rifle on its own, it just doesn't have the rate of fire combined with its damage potential to make it effective. Two of them obviously work quite well because it's a 30 point alpha, uh, where it's compared to a 15. And it, it, it it's weird saying that a, a 15 points of damage just doesn't seem like enough. Uh, it, it's weird to say that because the Gauss Rifle is arguably one of the most effective weapons on tabletop with its basically zero heat, its incredible range, and the fact that, yeah, 15 damage in one hit. You only need that and a medium laser to hit, and the person's doing a piloting check, for instance. But in Macroin Line, it's it's pants, unfortunately, uh, and this this poor Victor uh, is the one that suffers the most from it. It retains its jump jets, and it, it does have that maneuverability. But again, on the tabletop, that maneuverability is really good with its jump jets, but. In Mechron Line, three to four jump jets is a gnat's fart in the wind. It doesn't get it very high up. It means that the mech can't be very maneuverable, for instance. You can't just... Again, I'm always referencing the tabletop, but the, the stark differences here and why the Victor, I think, was one that was much maligned until the 9A1 was added, uh, which allowed you to do things like the triple AC-20 build. Uh, it, it's because the mech suffered from the fact that it just didn't have that maneuverability that it normally has on the table and its weapon setup is really spartan for 80 tons. I mean, when we put into context here that the Zeus, another 80 tonner, can bring uh, an L LRMs and uh, you know an AC weapon and energy and it's more effective despite the fact it's the same tonnage. The Awesome has some great builds in a similar weight range and the uh, the Hatamoto Chi is also pretty damn good. The Victor feels a little bit out of place, unfortunately, uh, which is a shame because I think it's one of the best looking assault mechs in the Innisfear lineup, uh, both originally and in the redesign uh, here in MWO. They did a fantastic job with it. Uh, but I wouldn't really recommend the 9D, unfortunately. Now, getting on to the match, oh, this was a nail biter, this one. So. Our, as you could see, our team basically had them bottled at the bottom of a hill. They had two options. They could push up the hill, not a good idea obviously, but that's what we wanted them to do. Or they could split and flank around the hill, but that risks the idea that everyone will push down and kill the guys at the bottom of that one, and then by the time they, their teammates flank around, it's too late. Unfortunately, at the early part you could see that there were a majority of members of the team who just decided that they wanted to keep poking. 
and obviously when there's a bunch of guys at the bottom of the hill waiting for anything to uh, show a piece of itself, uh, yeah, they got focused down pretty damn quick. And yeah, this was a this was a dangerous game uh, to play. I honestly thought it was already a lost cause quite early in the match, but uh, I thought I'll, I'll soldier through it. I'll see I'll see if I can keep going. But there's an annihilator down there, and it's trucking me up pretty badly. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's why I think I spend most of this behind a rock, because I'm waiting for the enemy to come up. I'm not stupid, I'm wandering this thing in front of that, because one of the other problems is the, the victor sacrifices a good chunk of armour. Uh, even the 9 Delta uh, only gets about a ton extra armour. Remember, it's, a, it's an 8 ton that sacrifices 4 ton of potential armour protection for its jump jets, which is bad. Very bad for an 80 tonner. And it's a mech that runs at 64, which is average heavy mech kind of speed, but unfortunately it, it's, it means it's only running heavy mech type speeds, and it's got less armor than most heavy mechs. So it, it's, it struggles a bit. It's, it's a very situational uh, assault mech, uh, at least the 9 Delta. Is, it, it, like I said on the tabletop, that was the risk you were taking. It was sort of like the ability to hop over a building, to flank a target, get behind someone, and you bring that AC-20. Into a uh, into a effect was the best part about using the mech. In uh, MWO, on the other hand, it, it's it's just it's a tough sell. Obviously, removing the jump jets helps innumerably, but also it, it doesn't have a huge amount of hard points, and uh, it suffers uh, for that, unfortunately. And this configuration, I just couldn't recommend. Now, the other two, I wholeheartedly recommend. Very very fun, a lot better. Um, by comparison. Uh, at this point, yeah, I just thought, well, I think we've won now, so fuck it, I'll go for it. But I didn't really want to just wander out straight in front. I mean, it's annihilated, you got to respect that firepower. So, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Dying Embers of the Match, as I said, wouldn't recommend it. It's a, it's a bit of a, bit of a dog's dinner, really. So, um, yeah, it's a shame for, uh, one of uh, one of Davian's most prolific assaults, although it isn't a Davian mech to start with. That's something uh, it comes from the 2500. It's got a bit of age to it. The old girl, she's been around a while, boys. Got to be a uh, got to be uh, careful with the old days. She might fall apart any minute. Anyway, that's that one. There's the scoreboard. My horrible, horrible score. Thank you for watching, everybody. Hope you have a good week, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.